Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to share with you my top 10 tips with dealing with bullying, getting over bullying, and not letting bullies affect your present life, even though it happened years ago. This video was actually inspired by Summer Rain, who has like 16 million Instagram followers, something ridiculous, and apparently she was bullied a lot to the point where she was homeschooled as a uh, high school student. So that's my first tip, and that the first tip is to realize that there's all different types of bullying and anyone can be bullied. It's not just like the stereotypical nerd or you know kid in school who's an outcast. Uh, and realize that there's all different types, even like really seemingly cool people, cool popular people, they could have lived a different life when they were younger. So that's number one. Number two is to realize that your trauma can hold you back years later down the line. So for me, I'm definitely a bit of an outcast. And when I was younger, I was uh, really uh, kind of didn't really have many friends. Uh, I sat alone a lot at lunch and I still hold that outcast identity with me uh, wherever I go. And I'm trying to get rid of it. I'm getting better at it. I've been uh, trying to. Uh, use a number of tips I will mention in the past but realize that like just because it's over doesn't mean that uh, you fully let it go that trauma can be uh, unconscious in your mind until you kind of address it and come to terms with it otherwise it will just kind of react in ways that you don't realize so that gets us to number three this this is where it's an actionable tip for you and then the first tip number three is to actually do something about it. Specifically, I really recommend that you don't push it away in your mind. Really address and, and accept it and realize that this was part of your life, but it doesn't have to be. A lot of people will kind of just like not like when it comes to their mind, they'll kind of like push it away, and that never solves the problem. Like sometimes it will just come up. Like you'll be just doing what you're doing now, and then for some random reason, you'll think about, think back to that moment in the past where it happened, even if it happened years ago where you were like isolated as a kid and you didn't have people to hang out with or someone was, or a group of people or one person was really verbally abusive to you. Uh, you're gonna have to really remember that moment and not to like relive the trauma, but to kind of come to terms with it and accept that Hey, this is this is what it was in the past but uh, that doesn't have to define me now and you know if you run away from it it can become a monster that's bigger than it is now number four and again you can kind of see that I have been reading some therapy and psychology books on it not a lot but some light reading number four is to really work on taking that issue and seeing how you can take steps now to address it so go out there and do something actionable now to improve upon yourself so that your past identity isn't your new identity for me it's about you know that false past identity of oh I'm that guy that people won't want to hang around or they're always making fun of me when in reality they're just laughing and they could just be making a joke about something unrelated and I'll just constantly assume that whoever it is they're laughing or making fun of me so to kind of uh, you know cure this I try and really investigate these situations a bit and, and then remind myself and realize hey they're not making fun of me they're just having a joke and they're, they're making a joke and I'm part of that joke in the sense that we're laughing together about something. They're not laughing at me. Cliche but true. It, it's actually very helpful. Number five are affirmations. Now, we're not talking any cheesy like visualization or mystical stuff. I'm just talking like writing down all the things about you that you like. Just keep reminding yourself about all the things that you like about yourself, even your flaws. Um, and uh, it doesn't have to be cheesy or something that's false because then you, you don't believe it yourself. But 
we tend to forget about all the things we do that make us awesome, that we are proud of, and it really just gets us down. It's called, um, it's the, it's a positivity bias or negativity bias. Um, based off our psychological wiring, uh, it worked for our ancestors, but not for us. We f focus so much on the negative. If 10 good things happen, if you get a hundred positive comments on social media and one negative, it's that one negative one that will you'll dwell on. And this worked for our ancestors because we lived in small tribes and that one negative event could have meant our death. But that's not the case for us nowadays and social media blows it up to huge proportions what leads to our downfall. And we get more negative comments in a day than our ancestors did in a lifetime. So what I do, and this really helped, I call it the jar of awesome. I just write down all the small things. And again, I'm not some big superstar uh, you know, social media celebrity so I don't have like huge achievements it's not like oh I just met 10 celebrities today it's small stuff for me it's like you know today I um, carry the ladies groceries out this is just an example um, but I do tend to do stuff like this and she said thank you and she was really appreciative of that or today I really uh, praised this co-worker I had and um, he really was very thankful that I went out my way to do that. These small things, and I always forget about them. I gloss over them, and I, at the end of the day, I just dwell on the negatives or whatever it is. But when I remind myself about these, it really gets me in high spirits. Number six, the sixth thing you can do if you're dealing with uh, bullying in the present is um, realize that it will get better. It is cliche, and I don't want to dwell too much on this tip because it gets overused but it is true uh, realize that like your life is really long you live until your 70s or 80s or 90s and um, Warren Buffett is one of my role models because um, every year of his life he's already in his 80s but every year of his life gets better and better and uh, he's really a proponent of the long game of realizing that like you're not gonna be like it's not gonna happen overnight he didn't make 99% of his money until after his 50s. It's all about the compound return and investment. And that doesn't mean you have to suffer for like 50 years before you can um, succeed. But it does mean that like just because it really sucks now doesn't mean that it always has to. The reason I don't want to dwell on this tip is because I didn't believe it even though people told me about it for so long. I just It's just really hard to fathom when you're in that phase when you're young. So I'm not gonna dwell on this tip, it is true, but it, it will be hard for some of you young kids to believe um, from experience. So seven, the seventh tip is if you are experiencing it now, I remember this one time, I was a senior in high school and these freshmen were bullying me. Um, it sounds ridiculous, but um, it happened. And it was just like, whoa, how can this be happening? Like. Um, I, I thought I was the only senior in this class. It was a class I forgot to take that was a credit class and They were like pushing and, and prodding me and I think what happens is that You know People just tend to test they want to test everyone to see who won't push back who won't stand up for themselves and It just so happened that I kind of assumed that they wouldn't do it because I have the seniority status and that's what they were talking about at first but by the end of the class they were bullying me a lot like teasing me and pushing me and prodding me and it really got to me and I was just kind of shocked that they would do it even though they were like four great levels lower than me so my seventh tip is to realize the psychology and evolutionary biology behind why this happens it may just kind of like um, help you understand more that it's not entirely their fault and that maybe sometimes they don't really mean it as badly as they did. Um, at the time, I was I was really almost to the point of hatred to these people, um, but now I, f I forgive them. It's uh, but um, it's important to realize that uh, from a scientific perspective, once boys hit puberty, they hit a phase where status becomes much more important than it was in the past. And one outlet of that is that they will bully people. Um, or try and assert their dominance in probably not the best ways, but they don't know any better They just all of a sudden start focusing on status and they'll maybe uh, push you around Maybe they'll call you names. Maybe they'll um, and this this has happened to me. They'll resort to like verbal uh, tactics to get you um, to show be shown as a lower status 
in sometimes uh, you know very vile and vicious ways and, and they don't know any better because uh, you know sometimes they, they're young and naive so they'll, they'll resort to like you know constantly calling you names to the point where it's not even funny anymore they're not making a joke it's just like um, they're actually physically physically verbally attacking you to the point where you feel like you have to physically fight back um, and that gets us to number eight which is um, sometimes it is important to actively address the problem uh, the big regret that I always that looking back at my life that I wish I had known is that there are numerous instances where I did not go to a teacher and tell them about this and I knew that if I had done this looking back they would have addressed the issue they would have assigned different seats to me they may have put me in different class they would have done something to kind of uh, work on solving this issue and I know a teacher sometimes it's a bad teacher or sometimes you're you're blackmailed to not be able to talk to an authority that can help you but for me I was way too passive I didn't stand up for myself and I was in situations where the teacher definitely could have done something and helped me out instead I don't know why perhaps I I was scared to you know address that it was more of an issue than than I wanted it to be maybe I was just kind of nervous uh, but for whatever reason there's numerous classes where I could have talked to the teacher and, asked, and told the teacher hey these people are bullying me they're being really rude to me can you do something about this can you like tell them to stop or move me to a different area of the class so I'm not next to them instead I did nothing because uh, part of me probably uh, didn't want it to be a huge issue even though it was and I didn't want to address that so that's a huge thing stand up for yourself um, it can pay dividends and there are good people out there who help you out. Number nine is to uh, remember that uh, there are peaks and valleys to your life and that not all of it is bad and don't generalize. Um, and when I was younger, I would tend to generalize and just say, oh, my whole year has been horrible. But that wasn't always the case when I realistically looked at the issue. You tend to demonize or angelize whole periods of your life when you're young because you don't know any better but looking back now that I'm older and a bit more mature I there were parts of my life where even back in those days there were glimpses of people who were really kind and nice to me I remember a couple people uh, some of them were um, lacrosse uh, varsity players uh, a couple of them were just very friendly white guys um, and I, I mentioned white because again I was also uh, felt like I was ostracized because I was one of the only Asians there um, and it kind of blew these things out of proportion but there were people who were just like friendly guys um, even people in um, in, in uh, restaurants and places I worked at um, in, in my side jobs and you know they would come up to me and they'd be like hey if anyone's bullying you or if anyone's hurting you uh, let me know and I'll you know I'll, I'll help you out and I forgot about those instances because in those small moments I wasn't being bullied and I was having a good time in life but then there were darker moments in life where these people weren't there uh, and those tend to like kind of generalize and you just kind of think back and you say oh my whole life childhood life was terrible when in reality it wasn't you just kind of forget about the good moments too so it goes back to that uh, jar of awesome journal really journal and write down and then read out to yourself all the good things that happen because you can forget uh, and then number 10 uh, as a disclaimer um, before I give you this 10th tip I'm not some uh, bullying expert there are severe cases of bullying that um, you know the professionals who could probably help you much more than I have I'm just giving tips that may or may not work but the 10th tip for me is that sometimes you have to take life into your own hands and that may mean making an active effort to make a change maybe you just have to move to a different high school a different state or get homeschooled or do some something active to you know work on improving your bullying I'm not I definitely do not recommend resorting to violence or death or suicide or, or homicide or any of that ridiculous stuff because you have your whole life to live and it's just like it's game over for there and um, I think it's foolish because uh, you know you're letting these people win I think the best the best way to um, stand up to them in a sense is to become really successful um, because they want you to just give up on life uh, 
And, and so if you become really rich and successful in a sense and happy and fulfilled and all, get what you, all you wanted in life, um, that's one way of doing it. So uh, sometimes this may mean just getting homeschooled or taking an active effort to get ahead and get it done. But that's what I recommend. Uh, sometimes it may mean moving because sometimes it is your environment that kind of sucks. If you if you live in a really uh, small town regional area with only like a small amount of people in it, of course you may get bullied a lot because uh, the people in that town are are very maybe small minded or they're just part of a very specific regional or cultural demographic, and it's not indicative of maybe what you would experience at a larger school who, who are more accepting and there's a lot more uh, cultural people there. So this video is getting long. Hopefully those 10 tips helped. Again, I'm not some expert, but um, maybe it will help you as they helped me. And uh, hit that subscribe button for more stuff like this. Thanks so much for watching this whole thing.